Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create some basic flying controls and mechanics for your game. So if I were to hit play, I can show you what we're going to make today. So as you can see, I'm running around walking perfectly normally, but if I were to double tap space or whatever button you want, you can see we're now flying. Now I'm going up because I'm holding space, and if I were to hold control, we go down, space up and I can move around like normal as well so we're flying like this and this is very easy to customize so the moment you can see this is kind of slow kind of floaty but we can obviously change that as well if we want to and if I double tap space I'm going to come out of fly mode again and you can again change what buttons do what so it doesn't have to be like that and also you notice I don't have any animations I'm just using the normal ones here I'm going to be making a second part to this tutorial where I will be adding in animations for us to be using so we're not just running on thin air like this so this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to create a new input action to be able to control our flying mechanics. Now if you're using 5.0 or under, you'll want to do it the normal way of edit project settings input. But if you're using 5.1 or beyond, you're going to want to create a new input action the new way. So for me, I'm going to go to content, third person, input, actions, and I'm going to right click IA move and then just duplicate that, naming it IA for input action up down. As that's what it's going to be for me. And I'll open that up straight away. Now in here, we're not going to actually change anything. So just make sure it looks like this. Then we'll save, close that. And now we're going to open up our IMC or input mapping context. And this is just a default for me, but the one you are using for your game. In here, I'm going to add a mapping and I'm going to add in our new one. So IA up down. And we're going to add in two bindings onto this one. The first binding is going to be space, so going up, whatever you want that to be for you. And the second one is going to be left control, so going down. Again, whatever you want that to be for you. But these two make the most sense for me, but you could use shift and control or Z and X, whatever you want to use, use those. And then all we're going to do is on the left control or the one going down, we want to add on a modifier and this modifier wants to be a negate. So we're going to get that like so save that and we can close this as that is also all we need to do to add in our inputs that will now be working perfectly for us so now we want to open up our player character blueprint so for me it's content third person blueprints bp third person character now in here there's not a lot we need to change it's actually very very simple so what we're going to do is find some empty space right click and get ia underscore up down or whatever you named your new input action we just created. Off of triggered of this, what we want to do is we want to just make sure the player can fly up the same way we're doing here for going left, right and forward backwards. So what we're going to do is firstly, we want to only do this when the player is flying. So we're going to right click and get is flying or just is flying, sorry. So we're going to get is flying from the character movement component like so. And we're going to hold down B left click to put this into a branch going into triggered of our input action. So again, this is only going to work if the player is flying. Then off of true, we're going to simply do add movement input. The world direction doesn't need to change, so we can just put this as one on the Z. Now, if you want this to be quicker, you could increase this, but for me, I think one is going to be fine. And the scale value of this, we want to right click action value, split structure pin, and then put action value X into the scale value there. And that will work perfectly fine for what we want to do for our controls. So if we compile, save this, we can hit play and test this out. So obviously if I were to hold space, we're gonna jump, if I were to hold control, nothing's gonna happen. So we're not flying up or down because we're not flying. If I were to press the tilde key to open up the console command, let me just move this here like so, and then just put fly, that is gonna enable the console command fly. And you can see if I hold control, hold space, sorry, we're going up. If I hold control, we're going down. So we have this working perfectly like so. But now we want to actually make it so we can go into fly and walk without having to do the console command. So this is very simple. Again, what I'm going to do is do it based upon if you double tap the jump button. So let me just also comment this flying controls. And then let's go down to where our jump is down here. What I'm going to do is just make this comment a little bit bigger and move these nodes down and out a little bit to give us some space. Then we want to create a new variable naming this jump count so we can see how many times the player has pressed the space button and we want to set this to be an integer we're going to get this 
and then we're going to get an increment int here. So that's just going to add one every time this is fired off. And this wants to go into started instead of triggered, so it's only going to fire off once every time we press the button. Out of this, we're going to get an equal equal, and we're going to equal this to two, or whatever you want. So I'm setting it to two because I want to double tap the button, but you can set it to three to triple tap, or four to quadruple tap, whatever it is you want, set it to that number. However, I wouldn't set it to one because obviously that will be every time you jump, you're going to be going to fly mode, which obviously isn't what we want here. Unless, of course, you have this for a different button, but then you don't need to do any of this. You can just do it normally from triggered. But again, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm doing this method here. Then we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch with that being the condition. False, we want to jump. So if we have not double tapped, we want to just jump like normal. And I'm going to move that down a little bit. And if we haven't double tapped, we're also going to go into a re-triggerable delay, setting this to 0.5. And then after this, we're going to set jump count to 0. So if the player presses space, waits a little bit longer, presses space again, it isn't going to work. But if they press space, then press it again quickly, it is because this won't have fired off yet. So a re delay is a delay that can restart every time it is triggered. Off of true of this branch means we do want to go into fly. So we're going to go into a flip-flop because this is also going to toggle on and off. So flying and walking. So A is going to be flying, B is going to be walking. So we're going to drag out of A and set movement mode, and that will get the character movement for us as well, which I'm just going to put underneath like so. Movement mode is going to be flying, not falling, sorry, the new movement mode is flying, and then we'll duplicate that going into B with the new movement mode this time being walking. So we can go back and forth between the two. And then I'm just going to move these out a little bit to make them a bit more organized and looking nicer for us, and I'll also expand the comment to be doing the same thing as well. And that is all we need to do to be able to enable and disable flying as well as have the movement controls for it as well. And again, in the next video, I will be going over animating this too. So let's compile, save, and hit play to test this out. So if I press space, we're going to jump. If I press space again, we didn't fly. But if I double tap it so quickly, we're going to start flying. Space goes up, control goes down, and WASD still moves the same. So we're still walking around like this, but we're obviously flying now as well like so. And then if I were to double tap space, we're going to exit flying mode perfectly, like so, as you can see here. Now if we go back into our character blueprint and select the character movement and then search for flying, you can see, or search for fly, you can see we can change the max fly speed, the braking deceleration, so that is the kind of floatiness of it, and also can fly. So we should tick can fly there, not sure why it is working without that ticked, but there you go. So now we can also change the deceleration of flying. So if I were to set that to 600 instead of zero, this should be a lot less floaty for us. As you can see here, still slightly floaty, but not as bad. As you can see, we have a lot more control over it. And you can obviously just increase this as much as you want. So we set it to 5,000 as an extreme example. It's just going to stop immediately like so. And this might be what you want. This might be how you want to have it. If it is, then perfect. That's what you have. So you have a lot more control now over where we are going, as you can see perfectly here. And what I'm also going to do is just increase the movement speed of this as well. So let's say 3000. Hit play and we'll test this out one final time. And you can see here, we now have our controls for flying around like this. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've created flying so we can start and stop flying using the same button and that's double tapping space. And this will also allow us to hold space to go up, control to go down, W, A, it's D to go forward, backwards, left and right. So we have the perfect controls for flying as we see here. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.